Hey everyone, and welcome to New Heart Nation, the podcast that promotes organic Christian growth. I'm your host, Sydney Lee, and today I want us all to think about a question. That question being, if I were talking to a new Christian or a non-believer about Jesus, what would I want to tell them? If you're new to the faith, then you might be thinking, what do I need to know? I thought about this question for a long time, long before the conception of this podcast even. It's been in my head since I fell in love with sharing the Christian faith. You know, I say, what would I tell a new believer? But quite honestly, there are mature believers that need to be reminded of this. That God loves us all unconditionally, all the time. It's a different love than we may think, and is certainly a different love than we feel for another person, but it's the strongest love in existence. One of the top reasons that I share the faith is because of the love that we receive and are then able to feel for God and others. Have you ever received unconditional love from someone? This may seem like a trick question, but it's not. The fact is, it's hard to receive unconditional love from other people because, well, we're just people. And at times, it's even hard to love ourselves. In the world today, we're seeing more depression and suicide because we have a hard time loving ourselves too. We can get so caught up in trying to be who others want or expect us to be and in comparing ourselves to others that we lose sight of how God sees us. Think about all the things that you've done over your lifetime that you're not proud of. We all have a long list, despite what anyone may tell you. It would be hard to imagine another person loving you if you had done all of those things to them, right? We may not even let anyone love us because we're ashamed of some of those things. But God is love. Accepting Jesus into your life is accepting forgiveness for that list of sinful moments that you're not proud of. It's saying, I believe that Jesus came to set me free from the baggage of my past and then to live. To live the rest of your life free, clean, and forgiven. The point that I'm trying to make is that God loves you no matter what. And not only is that a love that you feel, kind of like how you feel love from family, friends, or pets, etc. It's a love that fills you, a love that you wouldn't even believe existed. Romans 5.8 says, But God proves his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. If you need proof that God loves you, he sent Jesus to die for you. Think about that. I mean, I don't see anyone running to come die for me. Just saying. And why did Jesus need to die? Because sin separated us from God. We may be born into sin because Adam and Eve chose to eat from the wrong tree, but once we come to the age where we are capable of making our own bad decisions, being selfish, and committing wrongdoings, we are completely separate from God. When Jesus died, his blood washed away that stain of sin. This is what makes it possible for us to encounter God and to feel his presence. As the Bible puts it in John 14, 6, no one comes to the Father except through me. Jesus said that he is the only way. You can't fully experience the presence of God without accepting everything that Jesus died to offer you for free. God proves his love because he continues to forgive us, even when we mess up and have been screw-ups our entire lives. The best part is, it's already been done for us. It's like having your dream car sitting in your driveway, beautiful and clean, and the best part is, it was a gift. You didn't even have to pay for it. You just have to choose to get in and drive it. Choose to accept the gift. God knows that we mess up. He knows that we don't deserve it. But he loves you so much that he says, Here, take my hand and let me show you what joy really is. This means, guess what? God knows you. He knows who you are and what you've done. And he says, come to me. Follow me. Regardless of your past, God wants a relationship with you. And in order to have a successful relationship, you have to let go of and think differently about your past. This is true in romantic relationships in our lives too. You don't get into a new relationship and just talk about your ex and how bad they were to you. That might come up once or twice, but if you're constantly living in your past relationship, then you can't fully give yourself to a new one. It simply doesn't work. This is why the Bible says that the old is gone and the new has come. Who we were before we had God in our lives is not the same person that we are after. And if you're listening to this and you haven't committed your life to Christ or invited him into your life, know that you don't have to have your ducks in a row first. 
you can have a fresh start. It's incredible that there's someone who really sees you, who knows all of your thoughts and everything that you've ever done and loves you regardless. And you say, well, why would he love me? That doesn't make any sense. And the answer is simple. It's because he created you. He wants a relationship with you. I don't know if you have kids, but I have a five-year-old and he is full of energy, just like any other child. And because he's still learning, there are times where he can get pretty mean with me. And all I want to do is have a good relationship with him, a healthy parent-child relationship, which seems to be hard to come by these days. And because of that, I'll help him work through his thoughts. I'll still love him after he hits me with his toys on purpose, and when he calls me mean because I won't let him have a second piece of candy after dinner. In the same way, you are God's child, and he is there with his arms wide open for you when you are ready to come to him. I know that it can be really hard to do because we're taught to fix our own problems. Make a way for yourself. Don't ask for help. Do it the right way the first time and don't mess up. And so many other lessons that make us feel all alone. But it's a simple choice. So I circle back around to this question. What would I tell a new believer or a fellow believer that may need encouragement? What's something that you could tell someone? Say to them, God loves you regardless of your past. And you can be set free from trauma and other baggage that you carry around with you in your mind. Think about Romans 5.8 today. And remember that Jesus gave his life on the cross so that all of our sin and wrongdoings could be covered by his perfect blood. You can even speak over yourself today or repeat right now. God, I know that I have a past. I know that I have done things that I am not proud of. But I thank you that I am covered by the blood. I may have a hard time feeling it right now, but I ask that you help me to feel your love and forgiveness. In Jesus' wonderful name, amen. Thanks for listening today. I really hope you got something out of it. The scriptures referenced in this episode are listed out in the description for your use. Also, thank you to everyone that supports the production of this podcast. If you enjoy this podcast, please rate it from where you're listening. Every rating helps. If you'd like to support the production of this podcast, you can do so on my Buy Me a Coffee page linked in the description. You can find me on Instagram at New Heart Nation to send me a message, get prayer, and send in requests on content that you would like to hear about in future episodes. God bless and have a great day.